lot of people take outdoor recreation for granted. They assume it's there, they assume public land is, is theirs to use, they assume the resources, the large mammal groups, the fishes, and, and all of those things are natural. The fact is that most of those are very closely managed in this day and age. My name's Dave Yonk, and I fly uh, full-time for Colorado Division of Wildlife. Airplanes were first used in Colorado to stock fish in the 40s and are still being used today to stock 800 high lakes. Because of physical migration barriers and lack of suitable spawning habitat, 70% of these waters would be void of fish if it were not for aerial stocking. Small fish, ideally one to two inches long, are delivered in fish trucks from the hatchery. They are weighed and loaded into a nine compartment tank mounted behind the pilot's seat. Each compartment, holding as many as three to 4,000 fish, is aerated by a portable oxygen tank and small carbon stones. The fish are transferred into a lower chute that extends out the belly of the airplane. Let's go with Dave on a flight for a bird's eye view to see how this is done. Air stocking begins early in the morning when conditions are best suited for flying. We'll head from Fort Collins toward the Raywa Wilderness Area in north central Colorado. This flight is one of many in the fall of 2000. There will be 327,000 native cutthroats stocked in over 300 lakes this fall. This will take two pilots in two planes, five working days. As many as nine different lakes can be stocked on one flight. From the air, you can see landmarks from a totally different perspective. Water levels in Horsetooth Reservoir, seen here, are quite low. The pooter unit in the distance is the source of the greenback cutthroat trout we are stocking today. The pooter has recently become a broodfish unit, maintaining small populations of both greenback and Rio Grande cutthroat trout. The eggs were taken in June from the greenbacks, then hatched and reared at the Glenwood and Mount Uray facilities. I've worked for the division now for 12 years. The first time I hauled a load of fish, I brought the fish back because I told these guys, I said, it's, it's suicidal to be flying around in these cirques and those kind of things. Uh, much of this flying requires you unlearning many of the things that you've learned about mountain flying originally. And going into places that appear to have no way out is all against what you were taught as, uh, as a pilot. Now we are approaching our stocking destination in the Raywa Wilderness area at the Continental Divide near Cameron Pass. All of these lakes are above 11,000 feet elevation. Some lakes are not very visible as the plane makes its approach. Many are quite small, including the first lake stocked, called Hang Lake. It is 4.3 acres and seems to hang on the shelf of the mountainside to our left. The pilot makes his diving approach to the lake, levels off at about 50 to 75 feet above the water, and drops the fish into the center of the lake. Our next drop, Brent Lake, is also quite small. 5.7 acres, not a big target for a plane traveling at 75 to 80 miles an hour. Some lakes, such as Ruby Jewel, our next destination, have very narrow bowl-type settings that require skilled approaches. Here, the pilot must bank, often 65 to 70 degrees, and side-slip the plane downward toward the lake quickly leveling out at just the right moment, successfully delivering his cargo right on target. Colorado provides spectacular mountain scenery, such as Kelly Lake and Island Lake, as we head toward the Kerry Lakes. Air currents and downdrafts are always a concern in mountain flying, but especially important for this next approach to the drop into middle Kerry Lake. Now we can see the actual spray coming from under the plane, 
Notice the perfect splash pattern right in the center of the lake as we fly out after the drop. We now approach our final lake of this trip and complete a small loop in the Cameron Pass area. Blue Lake is located just below Hang Lake and is a seven mile hike in from the trailhead along Highway 14 west of Chambers Lake. Bang, there's the drop. Years ago, the division used to, via pack horses, stock these lakes. Several problems exist with that yeah. mode. Uh, it'd take four or five men, maybe a whole day, to take one lake. We can stock as many as 50 lakes in probably four to five hours of flying time. So they enter the lake under a less stressful condition. And you might say, well, that drop's going to be pretty stressful. That's probably true, but not as stressful as being deoxygenated or overheated, that sort of thing. Research on the aerial stocking technique has shown there is a 95% survival rate. Without aerial stocking, hundreds of high lakes would be void of fish. Many of Colorado's lakes, reservoirs, and streams receive millions of trout from one or more of the Colorado Division of Wildlife's 16 hatcheries, like the Bellevue hatchery below. Bellevue typically produces only fingerling or sub-catchable trout, those smaller than 6 inches. Catchable-sized trout, 10 inches or larger, are reared and truck-stocked from facilities such as the Watson Rearing Unit seen here. Thanks to the Division of Wildlife Aquatic Programs and the aerial stocking efforts, many of these lakes now have thriving populations of native trout. This is never routine. It always keeps you thinking and it's always challenging. And uh, uh, actually, it also gives you the feeling of accomplishment that we're providing a very valuable recreational opportunity for the public.